Hello and welcome to Experience Weekly Credit Chat, which we host every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Each week we cover a different personal finance topic, and because we're already one week away from the first holiday of the season, or well, actually it's probably the second because Halloween was the first, but Thanksgiving is next week. So this week we're going to talk about ways to save on holiday travel. So I'm really excited. We have an awesome uh, panel here with us today. We have Tracy Miller Nobles, CPA, Associate Professor at Austin Community College and member of AACPA's National CPA Financial Literacy Commission. We have Jennifer Jackson, Millennial Transition Coach and creator of uh, Adult 101, which covers topics from budgeting to life hacks to make adulting easier. So Jennifer is actually going to be jumping on right now, So, but I just wanted to introduce her. And we have Rod Griffin, Experience Director of Public Education. How is everybody doing today? Great, thank you. Marvelous, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I was talking to Tracy before the chat started and I cannot believe that it's already the holidays. Like we are here. How, where, where did this year go? I know, I can't believe it either. You know, like I was saying, it's like all of a sudden I feel like, okay, we just had Halloween and now it's Thanksgiving. And before we know it, I'll be putting up, putting up my Christmas tree and the Christmas lights um, on the house. and. Oh my gosh, the list just gets longer and longer, doesn't it? We yeah. put up, I put up two Christmas trees in the last two days. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. So we're you trying to get ahead of everything. We have you break my 30 rule. Tubs, because my, you know, like 30 my tubs rule. of the attic. Oh my, 30, 30 tubs? 30 tubs and boxes, yeah, and boxes of stuff. That's what my wife counted. Oh my goodness. I I'm always collecting say, things. <laughs> I say no Christmas decorations before Thanksgiving. We have to get through Thanksgiving and no Christmas music too, which drives people crazy. Even though the radio uh, started it, I'm like, no, I, I have to get through Thanksgiving first and then get to Christmas. I agree. That's, That's my rule too. <laughs> usually ours. Usually it's things go up and we the lights come on on Thanksgiving. Oh, okay, but I'm traveling. Speaking of for for work and other things, and so it's like I'm going to be gone. So we have to do everything as soon as we can, and then we're traveling. So it's like, what time do we have now? So it's like, so that's what we're doing. We're breaking all of our rules. No Christmas music yet, though. I agree completely. Yeah, yeah. It's too my, soon. Um, one of uh my coworkers here. When we go to lunch, he will um. Once we get in the car, he'll turn on the Christmas music really loud and make me listen to it as we're driving. And I just try to tune it out because he knows that that bugs me so much. <laughs> There's it's a so it, didn't, it didn't used to start until Thanksgiving. I just want to understand, especially the Christmas music thing. And the day after Halloween, November 1st, there was a station that went to all Christmas music all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I love Christmas, but that's just, it's too soon. Too soon. Yeah. yeah, I get kind of sad about it because I think sometimes Thanksgiving, um, you know, we just like we just lose. rush past Thanksgiving without and go right into Christmas. And Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mine too, because the food is amazing that day. <laughs> <laughs> Candy said, uh, hey, Jennifer. Hey, I'm finally here. Sorry. Oh, there hey. she is. Yeah. Hey. Candy here on Periscope said that uh, that sounds like carpool torture. So I agree, Candy. It totally is carpool torture. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for being able to jump on. I'm sorry that we had like a technical glitch there, but I'm happy that you were able to jump on. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to reintroduce Jennifer if you were not here for the introduction. So Jennifer is a millennial transition coach and creator of it's ADLT 101, which is Adult 101. Yeah, and they cover. Uh, topics from budgeting to life hacks and making adulting easier. So thank yes. you so much, Jennifer and Tracy, for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad I got my, my computers, I don't know, it's doing its own thing. So <laughs> <laughs> We never know what's going to happen with live video. We just kind of roll with it. So it works. Don't worry. <laughs> So as I was doing my research for this chat, um, one of the sites that I actually like to use to compare flights or find cheaper flights, Hopper, they said that for the winter holidays, flights can be priced up to 75% more than non-holiday flights. So I thought this would be a really good chat to have to help people try to figure out how to save more money during the holidays when they're planning their travel. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump into the first question, which is, uh, what items should be factored into a holiday travel budget? Tracy, we'll go ahead and start with you and then we'll jump over to you, Jennifer. 
Okay. Yeah, great. So in thinking about a holiday um, budget, when we're talking about travel, you know, of course we have all of the regular expenses that we think about with travel, like the airfare and the hotel, but all of those expenses are going to be more, more expensive, just like you said. And then we also know that we're going to have a lot of extra things. So we tend to uh, entertain more during this time. We tend to go out to eat more often, you know, so we might be visiting friends or family, whereas we might stay in a couple evenings during the holiday season. It's, you we think about all the time we're going out and we're socializing and entertaining with people. So the, all those costs certainly add up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jennifer, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Uh, yeah. So I definitely agree with everything that Tracy said, because around the holidays, um, you do have your regular expenses and then you have things on top of that, like gifts, you know, of course the amount of travel, if you're going far rather than, you know, down the street and you really have to like, I like to start planning for the holidays in October because like that's, you have a little bit more time to breathe that way. And so um, one of the biggest things for me has always been like trying to figure out how to get home and deciding like how much to spend. And so I definitely always like make a little, like a, a extra budget. And sometimes it's a matter of like, like dispersing the money that you have, but also maybe figuring out how to get more income as well, because there's a lot of holiday, like part-time gigs and stuff too, that you can pick up if needed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. You have to make that travel budget fit into your overall budget. So if it doesn't, you know, finding little ways that you can increase your income at that time can definitely be beneficial. And I agree, Tracy, you know, every, it seems like every weekend from now through the end of the year, there's something going on, some activity that, you know, we're, that's happening, some party that's going on. So all of that stuff has to be factored into the budget. Yeah, it does. Okay. Sorry. Uh, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Um, same issues. I mean, you have to think about, you know, all of the same things. What are you going to take with you? Where are you going to go? You know, what has to go? My wife and I's biggest disagreement used to be at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, but especially Thanksgiving, uh, when we would go to our kid's house, we would take Thanksgiving dinner in our truck. So we'd have a big giant cooler with the turkey and the ham and the, all that stuff. <laughs> I kept saying, they have grocery stores up there. Why do we have to? He says, we're going from Texas to Kansas. I'm like, why do we need to carry all this extra weight and all this extra stuff? And so one sore point my wife and I ever had, and I finally said, we don't have room anymore. So, you know, but it's the, it's all of those things. You have to think about fuel cost lodging, how you're going to get there. What's the weather going to be like? I mean, it's a lot of you know, folks pointed out on Twitter. Um, you know, we spent a night at a Best Western uh, on the floor of their, their meeting room with about a hundred other people because of an ice storm one time. And so, oh Kind of one of the best Christmas trips I ever had, though. I mean, in hindsight, because it was truly people pulled together. It was like the real the Christmas spirit, what it's supposed to be like. You know, everybody helped everybody, and so you know, kind of a a cool thing to happen. No pun intended, because it was freezing. But you know, it. But it. You know, it's one of those things you you have to kind of plan for. Do you have blankets? Do you have all the, you know all the stuff you need to think about? You need to get to take with you. Yeah, absolutely. We, so. we have a question too about planning for the unexpected because you just never know what's going to happen when you're traveling, you know, suitcase, yep. suitcases get lost. You could get caught in a snowstorm, you know, depending on your mode of transportation. So anything could happen. So trying to figure out how to plan ahead for that, that's definitely something we're going to talk about. And on, on Periscope, we just got asked if it's cheaper to get an Airbnb or a hotel when traveling. And so that's one of the questions we're actually going to go through in uh, a little bit. So we definitely talk about lodging in this chat. So definitely stay tuned for that. So when choosing the mode of transportation, Rod mentioned, you know, road tripping. Uh, we talked about flying possibly. Um, what factors should you uh, consider when trying to choose which mode of transportation is cheaper for you? Uh, Jennifer, let's go ahead and start with you. Okay. So this is actually interesting because today my sister, she went home for Thanksgiving. So I'm actually staying here this year um, in Atlanta, but she bought a, a bus ticket because what's today? The uh, 15th. And her ticket was $5, literally. So wow. just by like 
So she's planning to spend more time at home. She has a flexible schedule because she's an actress. But if you can, like, kind of miss the travel window, you can save a lot of money. Like, if you go, like, make a, a trip of it, like, oh, I'm going to stay for an extra week. If you, can, if you can do that in your schedule and, like, you'll save a lot of money that way. Mm-hmm. Same thing with, like, flights. Like, the, the days before the holiday mm-hmm. are typically really, really expensive. But like I said, if you can maybe catch the Monday before or even, like, the Sunday and make it a week of it, you'll save a lot of money. Yeah, that's a really good point. Really good point. Um, Tracy, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Yeah, sure. You know, I was thinking about in my situation, you know, we always, um, my husband and I, he has three kids. And so, you know, you think about buying airfare for five people, that gets to be quite expensive. I mean, so one Christmas, we drove all the way to California and from, I live in Texas, all the way to California and back for Christmas. And it was simply because when I did the calculations for it, buying five airfare tickets in comparison to spending the gas in the hotel, it was cheaper to make the trip. Because, you know, if you think about it, you don't just have the airfare, but you're most likely going to need a rental car when you get to the location that you're going for the holidays. If they don't have great public transportation or if you're, you know, moving a family around, you can't always use taxis or um, Ubers. So you've got to think about all those types of things. What I did, which actually was really interesting, um, was I found on the on the internet I found a website that would um, calculate the amount of gas that you would spend in a trip that you were going on so I had a really good estimate of how much gas I would spend and then I added in the hotel rooms that we would need and then I compared it to the price of the tickets and it was just so much cheaper for us to take the road trip to California and it was also a lot of fun because we stopped at the Grand Canyon on the way so we made a a, a great trip out of it whereas um, instead of just going to the airport and dealing with all the people that are at the airport at, at Christmas time so that's a that's a really good example of you know if you if you have to go long distances and you're thinking about transporting more than one person, oftentimes it's going to be cheaper to to drive as opposed to fly. Yeah, and I really like that you factored yeah. into that the the fact that you might even need to rent a car if you do fly out there. So a lot of people there are just thinking about the cost of the flight, maybe. So bringing awareness to these types of things that you're going to be paying for. Um, is really important as well. So yeah, think about when you're when you're cost comparing not just the cost of the flight, but the transportation to and from the hotel. Maybe also thinking about where you're going to park your car if you are flying. So are you going to pay to park it? Are you going to take a taxi there? Because that's another uh, fee that you need to add into the to these things when you're comparing the cost of flying versus maybe. Or like Jennifer said, taking a bus, possibly um, figuring out what's easiest for you. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Got to remember all those expenses. Yeah. And then also factoring in what Rod said earlier about checking the weather, because if you're heading somewhere like you went to California, but maybe if you're heading somewhere where there's snow, are you going to have to think about what kind of things you're going to have to do to your car, an oil change, maybe tires, or um, I'm sorry, chains for your tires, you know, things like that to weatherproof your car a little bit more. So other things that you should think about when traveling. Yep. And you have to think about so, what's, um, be- so you have to think about, about what's between you and your destination too. You know, so from, you know, 80 degrees in Dallas today to 70, 80 degrees in California, there's the Rocky Mountains. And how do you get, you know, so that plays a big part of the equation. Can you get there and what are you going to run into between the two? So, um, you know, you have to think about that as well. Absolutely. We actually hit a blizzard when we were going to California. So we ended up changing (laughs) our route to go out of the way of the blizzard, um, which added a whole nother layer of excitement. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. <laughs> that actually reminds me when uh, one, one year I drove home because I went to school in Colorado and one year I drove home for the holidays with one of my um, college friends and we hit, um, there had been a small avalanche on the road and that they had to clear out and we had to turn our car off so we wouldn't waste gas, but it got freezing in that car mm-hmm. as we sat there. I mean, we were so cold. Thankfully, we had like warm socks, but we were piling, like taking stuff out of our suitcases and piling it on us as we sat there waiting for them to clear the road up. So definitely have to think about those types of things, those types of factors. 
Um, when it comes to, if say you decide to make the choice to fly for the holidays, um, what are some some simple tips to save on flying? Uh, Tracy, we'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, so I, you know, I was thinking what Jennifer said about how she talked about, you know, thinking about when you're going to fly, so you can um, try to leave earlier than most people would fly out for Christmas or for Thanksgiving, or um, oftentimes you can get a great flight on the day of the holiday. So flying on Thanksgiving or flying on Christmas always works really well. You know, utilize all of the resources that we have on the internet that allow us to price um, comparison, all of the different flights. Um, you know, sometimes I think that, you know, I'll go out there and look on those comparison sites, and then oftentimes I'll actually book it directly through the airline because I think that I get better customer service if I do that. Um, so I think all those types of things can really help with, um, with travel. The other thing is, you know, if, if you're using, um, if you have miles and you don't have the extra money, um, uh, miles is, it's expensive to use your miles during the holidays. Um, but it's a great, it's a great way that you don't have to spend money and you still get to go and see your family or friends for, for the holiday. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I think the other thing that it was, and I'm watching the, the chat as we go, the Twitter chat too. And one of the things we talked about was don't book your flights during the holidays, book the flights well in advance, mm -hmm. you know, plan ahead and book months out if you can. Um, yeah. And that can help save a lot of money too. And the miles is the other issue. We've done that. I mean, we've, you know, sort of stockpile our miles knowing we're going to take a trip in a year or two and, and uh, you know, use them then. Uh, just to, to save that money. So use them as a, as a savings account, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jennifer, do you have uh, anything that you want to add on to that? Yeah. So I use a lot of the, um, the travel sites. Um, so I usually like around the holidays, my, my birthday's in December. So I'm always like trying to plan a flight mm -hmm. around a weird time. And so I use like all the apps like Hopper, Skyscanner, um, Price Alert, um, like the Priceline Expedia, there's also another one called ITA Matrix, which is like sponsored through Google. And it allows you to go in and kind of see like all of the airlines and when they're leaving and you can really compare um, the flights between one another. I've just found like the only one that doesn't come on there usually is Southwest. Like you have to go on Southwest's uh, site and look up the different um, flights because for, for whatever reason they don't use those. But that's been able to really help me like get a whole picture of all of the different flights to be able to make this, find the cheapest one. And also when I'm shopping, I use it on like the incognito tab so it doesn't remember me and like try to change the algorithm to based off my searches. And so I just like kind of really hunt that way. And just like they said, like using the point. So throughout the year, I save all my points for the holidays because I know I'm going to be using more money at the end of the year. And it's good to be able to either, I have the option on my credit card to either like cash the points out as like cash to use on a flight or to use it as points towards a, like a travel voucher or whatever. So I, I always end up using my points around like the holiday season. You know, the other thing I was thinking was um, to be really flexible with your travel plans. So, you know, oftentimes the cheapest flights are going to be the ones that are early morning, which I hate because I hate yeah. early morning. Um, it's you like, you know, the 5 a.m. or something, but if it's $300 cheaper, then I'll definitely get up for that early morning flight. Um, so be flexible about, you know, when you're, when you're willing to leave and when you're willing to fly home. Yeah, and I think also um, something to remember, like you do pay a price for convenience, right? Like you said, it yeah. could be a little bit yeah. more to fly out at, you know, the, the more regular times. Also, another thing to think about that, um, since I, I've been researching flights recently, um, but also baggage fees. So sometimes the flight is a lot cheaper ticket wise, but then you get there and there's fees for everything. You know, you're checking your bags in. Um, if you want, maybe they don't serve any kind of refreshment on the plane. So if you want refreshments, you have to buy either at the airport or you buy it on the plane, which can be pretty pricey. So thinking about those kinds of things um, also when you're booking your flight. So look into that, do your, your research, not just on the flight prices, but also on the costs after that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And with, with some of the the, air, the budget airlines, what I do, like, with those, I, you, like, bring my snacks. So that you're allowed to bring food and stuff to the airport, but you have to have them in, like, li- little liquid bottles. So I bring, like, fruit or, you know, chips or stuff with me if I know that I bought, like, a budget flight to save money. And then I'll just bring my snacks and everything with me to yeah. save money that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll often bring just an empty water bottle. And then when I get through the security, then I'll just fill up my water bottle, um, you know, at the water station. And then I don't have to buy it water before I get on the plane. Yeah, that's really smart. All really good tips. Now, what about road trips? What are some ways to save on road trips? Especially, you know, gas, all of that stuff, it can add up. So, uh, Jennifer, we'll go ahead and start with you. Okay. So when I do road trips, um, I because you have a car, uh, you, I typically bring like, everything. So I'm bringing the food. I'm bringing. I don't try. I try not to stop as much for things. Um, depending on where I'm going, if I'm going to a hotel versus a friend's house, you know, I've packed up like thought really ahead about everything that I could possibly need. And as far as renting the actual car, um, I rather I think it's more important like spend the money up front on a car that's really good on gas as opposed to like a car that's if you can like if you have more people you might have to get like a bigger car but as opposed to a car that's um not as good on gas because you end up spending a lot of money on the gas and so i think a lot of times that outweighs the price the price like of getting a smaller or like a hybrid or electrical car that'll save you on the gas as opposed to getting a car that's going to be cheaper when you're renting it from the place and that might make a huge difference so just like she was saying she did a cross-country trip like if you have a car that's really good on gas, you won't be spending as much money on that way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Tracy, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Yeah, you know, I love road trips. I think I I generally, if I'm going to go for a while, I would rather drive than I would fly. Um, I especially love to go on road trips with, with my husband and his kids because it just gives us a good opportunity to all be in the car together and we get to see really great things. Um, on the way. So a couple of the things that we do, likewise, we try to um, pack all of our drinks and snacks and all that kind of stuff that we would want on the trip. We try to do that. We also um, pack our lunches um, so that we stop somewhere and eat lunch as opposed to, um, you know, doing the drive through or having to go to the restaurant. Um, The other thing we do is we also bring our own alcohol with us. So after we get to the location that we're at, you know, know, we like to have a After you get there, okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, clear we'll on that. have yeah. that ready for us um, so we can have a little happy hour after we get there, you know, if we have multiple stops. The other thing we do, because, of course, when you stop at the gas station to fill up with gas, you know, the kids go in and they want candy. Even though we have a whole car full of, of, of snacks, they want something that we don't have. So generally what we do is we give them a certain amount of money that they can spend on the trip, and then they're responsible for figuring out how much they're going to, you know, what they're going to spend their money on. That way they know, like if we go to the gas station and they want chips, it's like, this is their, this is their money and they can choose to spend that however they want to. Um, So that, that always works really good for us. Um, The other thing that I try to do is I try to plan the hotel rooms ahead of time. Um, So I don't wait to see how far we're going to go. So a lot of times we drive to Colorado um, after Christmas from Austin. And so I know about how far we're going to get each trip each day. And so I go ahead and get those hotel rooms reserved so that I'm not waiting until the last minute to get those hotel rooms reserved, especially because we need more than just one room. Um, So that's always um, something that is very helpful also. Nice. All right. Those are all really awesome tips. Thank you. Um, When Uh, you're the other one other way to save on road trips, have them come to you. (laughs) There you go. <laughs> I mean, that, so we do, we, and that's something we do every. It's kind of, you know, kind of a joke, but not. We switch. So you know, every other year, we either go to our kids or our kids come to us. So we we switch off, and that helps us all save money over time. Um, you know, so we can plan ahead. We know who's going to be where, um, you know, where we're going to stay, all of those things. Um, you know, so we're always a year in advance planning ahead. Yeah. yeah. When did you start that run? Oh, a long time ago. Um, you know, when we first moved. So I have, most people who know me have, you know, I have family near Kansas City and I have family and I'm in Texas. Um, 
And so ever since we've been that way and been apart, you know, our kids come down one year and we go up there the next. Um, now we have family in North Carolina, which is complicating things. So we're trying to figure out how to make that all work. <laughs> but, you know, how do we get the, everybody together? But, um, and Skype works for that. We did that last year. So when they couldn't be there, we, we had everybody on Skype all the time who wasn't with us. Nice. Nice. We did that one of my time. Yeah. One of my cousins was in China and we did that for Christmas so that uh, they could be a part of, of the Christmas celebration that we did. What about gifts? So, you know, we're, we're talking about things that you need to pack, uh, getting ready for it. How do you make sure that your gifts, um, that you can transport your gifts there? How do you make sure you do that frugally? Um, Tracy, we'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, so I actually try not to take any gifts with me if I'm traveling for the holidays. Um, so we typically don't, um, like instead of taking the gifts with me, what I'll do is I'll purchase the gifts online and I'll have those gifts shipped directly, um, to the family member's house that we're going to visit. That way I don't have to deal with the space that's required in the car or having an extra suitcase to carry the gifts and, and having to wrap them and all that kind of stuff. So I actually just tried not to take gifts with me. Um, or if I do, I try to make them really small, but usually I utilize um, all of the great deals that are available this time of the year. So many of the online re retailers are offering free shipping. And so I try to keep an eye out for those emails that come into my email box and make sure that I purchase those gifts during the free shipping time so that I don't have to travel with gifts. Nice. nice. Yeah. Jennifer, do you have anything? I go. Uh, yeah, so I was going to say the same thing, kind of like ship them to where you're going ahead of time uh, and utilize the free shipping there. And also if you, so I don't know, I usually go back to the same place for Thanksgiving and Christmas, like to my parents' house. And so I, if I like do like Black Friday shopping or something like that, I can even physically go buy stuff that may be on sale that day and then just wrap them up and keep it there until I go back until for Christmas because I end up going to the same place. Um, in that way. And also just um, sometimes depending on who I'm giving gifts to. So as I get older, I'm not necessarily buying as many physical gifts. Like I'm not getting big boxes of stuff. It's more like sentimental things. Like I might give you a picture or like, you know, write you a nice note or like a gift card to like your favorite place. And those things take up way more space. And I feel like are can be a little bit more sentimental depending on who you're giving them to anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm also, I'm curious, have you guys ever had the experience of maybe you're traveling somewhere that um, you don't know anybody that's there? Maybe you're traveling to a hotel or any, or something like that. Do you have any advice as far as that might go? Um, so it's that, what? Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Um, now that was just one of the things that also that I was thinking about, like say maybe a family yeah. decides, you know, we're going to, we're going to do a uh, Christmas, you know, it, somewhere, somewhere else this year, you know, by ourselves. I'm wondering yeah. if, 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 so we, you did know. That. <clears throat> we did that last year, last year we decided that all of the family was going to meet um, in Colorado and we were all going to have Christmas in Colorado together. And so um, we drove. And so that on that trip, um, we actually did our small family Christmas. We actually did it early so that we wouldn't okay. have to take the kids trips, uh, the kids um, stuff with them, their gifts, especially because like two kids got bikes. And I mean, how are you going to put a bike on the, you know, hide a bike on the way to Colorado? So we just did Christmas early with the kids so that they got all of their gifts early. And then um, the family gifts. I took those with me so that they could, we could do larger gifts. But one of the things we do in our family that I think is really helpful is um, in the past, we've drawn names so that you're not getting a gift for every kid, um, okay. you know, and so everybody draws a name and then you have a minimum, you know, a maximum dollar price so that, you, you know, you're, it's, it's easy to get out of control 
I think, at Christmas time and how much you're spending and how many people you're giving gifts to. And I just think it's nice if you can think really carefully about how much as a family do we want to spend on gifts? And is it really the amount of gifts that you're giving and getting? Or is there something that you can do that's um, more, you know, means more? You know, I'd rather instead of getting a gift, I'd rather have the time to spend time with my family than getting a gift. I'm, so I, I think there's a lot of ways that you can think about, I don't have to give a gift to everyone. And maybe there's some ways that you can minimize costs by doing that. All right. Really good yeah. advice. Definitely agree. Very cool. Yeah, okay. So. Oh, we uh, oh, I just, we were talking about, you know, how do you kind of limit and I, other things kind of funny. It's another kind of funny thing, but true. For, I think it's funny. I have a pickup truck and with a cover on the bed. That's how we limit gifts. When it's full, <laughs> that's as far as it goes. That's it. We're done. So you put up the bikes in there, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I, you wouldn't believe what I've had in the back of that pickup going north. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable. But I've become very good at packing, and we and my wife does not have a good sense of volume. So everything looks bigger to her than it is. So it's like telling her that truck is not, she sees a pickup. She sees it like, she thinks it's like a semi truck. Semi truck. You yeah. are you all. I'm like, no, that won't all fit. So, yeah. Uh, so if it fits, it goes, if not, oh, well. We're over budget. Yeah. Something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, I did see a message here on Periscope that somebody said, yeah, they like the idea of a secret Santa exchange or a Yankee swap. Yeah. Um, to help, you know, manage your budget and also just cut down on taking gifts. Yeah. Even like, um, I think it's called like a white Santa. I forgot what the actual name is. It's like, it's a game too. So you can bring your one gift and while you're exchanging gifts, that time could actually be like a, a family game. So you like yeah. put all the numbers in a hat and then everybody pulls out a number. And the person goes first, uh, they get to open up their gift. And then every as you go down the line, you get the option to either like keep the gift that you got or take somebody else's gift uh, that you like better. So it's, it's a game. Yeah. And you also only have to buy like one gift that way, too. So it's really yeah, it's so fun. white elephant. Yeah. Yeah, white, white elephant. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. I do that with my cousins because my aunt has five kids. So buying for five cousins, I was like, let's do a white elephant, everybody. <laughs> like, everybody bring one gift. Let's save yeah. some money. <laughs> we have, I have seven grandkids and, and three daughters. So I'm, and we, we don't, we set a budget for everybody, for each family. And that's how it so it's three, three, three girls. They, we get a budget. That's how we have to limit. But um, and sometimes, you know, the kids want something more expensive and, and that's part of the discussion too, you know, where the, the truck won't be quite as full because you're getting one small expensive thing as opposed to a bunch of, the lesser cost things. Yeah, so. we have that now too. I, I think as the, as the kids get older and they get to be teenagers and young adults, as they start to, their all of their gifts start to be more and more expensive. So you know, we've also we've often said that. Okay, you you want a new lap, an Apple laptop? Okay, well that's that's it. That's your one gift. So just yep. so you know, if that's what you yep. want, then you're not going to get anything else. Yeah, it's all about sticking to the budget for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's the impulse buys what do you get. And same thing for travel, I think, in holiday travel, it's the impulse buys that, you know, get you in trouble financially. It's, you have to plan ahead, so. Yep. What about um, lodging? How do you save on lodging during your travels? Jennifer, we'll go ahead and start with you. Um, so with lodging, uh, typically a lot of times I find like I'm going to stay with family. So obviously you can save money there. But yeah. if you're going to like a place where you all have never been, if you're going to be with, you know, family and friends, like I really like getting a larger place. There's a lot of sites where you can get like a home and it's way cheaper to like split the price of the home as opposed to everybody getting um, maybe a hotel. And also, if you're going to like a bigger city where, you know, of course, everything's going on downtown and you want to be right in the middle of things. But if you're already getting a rental car or you already took a road trip and you have access to a vehicle or even public transportation, sometimes you can stay 
on the outsides of a city, like maybe 20, 30 minutes out, and you'll save hundreds of dollars that way. And then just commute into the city to see the sites or whatever else you want to do and spend the money like doing an activity with your family. Yep. Yeah. Really good tips. Uh, Tracy, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Jennifer. You know, we um, we oftentimes will stay in like a VRBO or, a, you know, some type of um, housing situation like that because not only are we all able to stay together so we don't have multiple hotel rooms, but then we can eat breakfast. I can go to the grocery store and we can eat, get breakfast stuff. We can do lunches. We can do dinners there. So we're not having to eat out all the time like we typically have to do if we're in a hotel. And plus, it's just more comfortable. You know, there's usually, you know, we get you know, pretty big places. So there's usually multiple living rooms. And so that always um, makes it a much more comfortable um, trip. So I think that's always a great idea. I mean, the other thing that I think about when I'm traveling, especially during the holidays is, you know, we talked about using points for airfare, but don't forget that you can often use points for your hotels too. Yeah. So that's always a good thing to take a look at if you're going to travel places. Do you have points that are available so that you can get the room through points as opposed to paying for it. I think that's really useful too. Yeah. And then I try to book, if I'm going to go um, to a place like we're going to Winter Park, Colorado after Christmas, and I try to get that reservation really early um, because the closer it gets to time, the less availability there is and the more expensive everything gets. So I try to plan. I actually booked that, um, you know, two or three months ago. Um, um, just so that I would get a really good rate. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, all really good tips. And I do agree that I, I actually, my family, we enjoy um, doing that type of rental instead of staying at a hotel. Just for the simple fact, I think it saves a lot of money on food too. Just um, you only eat out a couple times as opposed to every single meal you have to eat out. Yeah. And that can add up for sure. Yeah. Uh, one of the really... <laughs> Cook big meals too, like with your family for Thanksgiving. I like to do that. So I'm yeah. like learning. I'm like learning. This is my turn to cook now. So I'm getting older. They're like, okay, Jennifer, what are you bringing? And so like, I'm doing that. And I actually enjoy making larger dishes. Like yesterday, I made cornbread. And I was like, look at me making making food. I have to prep it out. Like, so next week is Thanksgiving. And I have to, before I go to like visit with my family, I'm trying to like prep the meal to make sure it tastes good before I actually bring it there. <laughs> so yeah. That's always wise too. Making sure yeah. that it tastes yeah. before you take it for everybody to eat. <laughs> you no, know, I think that brings up a good point because a lot, you know, we're talking yeah. about traveling, but a lot of people host um, friends and families for the holidays. So, you know, everyone is coming to your house. And I think sometimes we think that we have to do it all, right? Like we have to do the turkey and we have to do the stuffing and we have to do all of the cakes and the pies and everything. And, you know, just asking people to help you and could you do the stuffing? Could you do the cornbread? Could you do the pies? That cuts down on the cost of hosting so much. And then, you know, also asking people, you know, if, um, um, if we get together with friends, a lot of times, you know, I might, I might serve the main dish. Could you bring a side? And then also asking them if they'll bring their own alcohol too, because, you know, at the holidays time, alcohol gets real, you know, there's a lot of consumption of alcohol and that gets to be a pretty expensive part of the, of the festivities. Absolutely. Absolutely. My mom is a really good delegator. She'll, she won't even ask. She'll just say, you're bringing rolls. You're bringing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. Like, if you're coming, we, this is what you're bringing. <laughs> so we have a deep freeze, and my wife started cooking things when and Christina knows at FinCon. She was yeah. so she was telling my wife was saying, "Well, I made Chex Mix today, and I'm making that." And there, it, we fill up the freezer with all of like the Christmas snack stuff, strawberry bread, and then it's all done in advance. Um, so all of the Christmas and, and Thanksgiving, you know, as much of the kind of cooking stuff you can do ahead is done ahead. Um, we have cookies already baked. We have, you know, all of those kinds of things. Um, same kind of issue saves time, which saves money. Um, we give them as gifts, it, you know, all of those things. So it does help fill up the truck though on that trip north. You have like 
<laughs> 30 bags of Chex Mix going with us. <laughs> you could lighten the load and send some to Austin. Yeah, there you go. We'll take some here in Costa Mesa too, Rod. <laughs> Um, one thing I really want to get to, because um, this hour is flying by, but how can you plan for the unexpected when it comes to traveling? What are some things that people can plan for just to get top of mind so that if it happens to them, they kind of know how to react? Uh, Tracy, we'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, I was laughing when Rod was sharing his story about having to s sleep on the floor of a Best Western Hotel. Um, that actually happened to me also, except we had to end up sleeping in the, this high school gym in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, on our way from Texas to Colorado. Um, it was, it, you know, and never would we have expected that to happen. Um, so unexpected things certainly happen. And I think, when I think about this, I think that this is the reason why we should all have um, you know, extra funds set aside, right? Rainy day funds, unexpected funds. And at Christmas time, it's so easy to think, oh, well, I'll just dip into my savings and use that to pay for gifts. And then next January, I'll pay it back. Um, and that, that's just not a great thing to do this time of the year because if you're stuck somewhere and you need that extra money, then that money's not there for you. So don't use your savings to pay for Christmas gifts unless you put yeah. special savings aside for Christmas gifts. You know, don't go into those emergency funds to pay for things during the holiday season because you never know when you're going to need those things. Um, you know, the other thing I was thinking about was, you know, just knowing that if you get in a situation where you can't, you know, where maybe you're traveling and you're stuck somewhere and, you know, that now's the time to have, if you don't have emergency savings, then at least to have like a credit card that you have some funds available on the credit card so that all your credit cards aren't maxed out, but you have like an emergency credit card. And that's a good time to use something like that if you don't have the cash available. And then know that in January, you're going to get that credit card paid off and make sure that you you put it away so that, that it's not available to use again. So those are some of my strategies that I think about with those emergency things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, on top of that, if you're going to take out that credit card, you know, have that plan for how you're going to pay it off um, set in place. Yep. Uh, Jennifer, do you have anything that you want to add on to that? Uh, yeah. So during this time, I, I'm really big, like, like Tracy said, kind of using your, um, your emergency fund, if you do have it, because like, Towards the end of the year, stuff just starts hitting the fan. Like, it just really does. And so I, I just find that something always goes wrong during these last two months. And so I do have an emergency fund, like a cash reserve. Um, but if not, like I said, I'm, like, my strategy is, like, throughout the year, like I said, I'm using my credit card for everything and paying it off each month. And so, like, I have the ability to be able to, like I said, use those points for either for travel or just to make them cash. So if I'm like, you know, have everything set aside and I have the like the points to be able to cash in, I'll use those two to just like, I can withdraw it out like cash if I needed to. And um, I do have like an emergency credit card with a low interest rate that, you know, you can pull out. And if you like last resort have to do it, um, do that. And then if you get, you know, gifts or money for Christmas, like, and you don't have it an extra in your income, like use that to pay off the bill because you definitely don't want to like ac accumulate debt during this time and then keep like transferring over it month after month. Just try to use the, because sometimes you get, you spend more, but you know, you're getting more stuff too. You're getting gifts. You're like doing different things. So if you find yourself do having like a little bit of extra income, just put it towards the, like put it towards the credit card debt. Cause that's like a gift to yourself to not have credit card debt. All right. Awesome. Rod, do you have anything that you want to add on top of that? Um, same things. You know, if you, it, always have that emergency fund and, and you know, it, it same issues. Jennifer's right. It seems like the emergencies happen now, you know, this time of year for some reason, it's like, okay, everything's supposed to go right and something will go sideways. Yeah. Um, our water heater just went out yesterday. Oh, yay. <laughs> no, no, we haven't. No, that happened t two years ago. Uh, so it's like, you know, we, I can remember, I, and I think it was Christmas. We were back in Kansas and I got three um, sidewalls, uh, three tires bubbled. Maybe they were going to rupture. So I had to get three tires for my truck. Um, 
uh, at Christmas. I mean, you have no choice. I have to drive 500 miles back. So, um, you know, you, if you're not going to carry cash, you still need that savings. You want to set aside, you know, and have that emergency, you know, credit card, make sure it's for emergencies, you know, and you, you keep it for that reason. Um, you know, or you have a card with sufficient um, limit that you can use it for that reason. And that's where you are. And then turn around to pay it back. Um, because that's, you know, emergencies are emergencies because they happen when you don't want them to, um, right. you know, that, and that's, um, and that's, it always seems like when you're in a big hurry trying to get things done and now is when all of that happens. So, um, you know, same issue, you, you got to have an emergency fund and you need to keep it, um, set aside, uh, and then savings for other things as well. Um, but yeah. just expect, you know, you always, I had a, a really a brilliant guy say one time, um, a man that I knew said that there are no such thing as there's no such thing as unexpected expenses or just un, unplanned for expenses or unprepared for expenses. So if you have an emergency fund, it's not a, not an emergency. It's, you, you can deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Last year, this time, uh, I think it was a week before Christmas, my car engine, I hit, um, a, a flooded part of a street it was raining really hard and my car engine flooded and I lost my car the week before Christmas so definitely agree with random things happen around yeah. this time of the year so just some other things that I want to add, to add on to that is you know if you're leaving your house making sure that it's secure maybe if you can have somebody that can come by and check on it you know while you're traveling just to make sure everything's okay a pipe hasn't burst or you know something crazy so you don't come home that's actually what happened to my parents right before they went to Lake Tahoe um, a couple weeks ago my mom went in the garage and noticed a pipe burst the day they were leaving so you know like if they ha if she hadn't noticed that she would have come home to a huge mess and a huge problem so if you could have somebody that's checking on your house making sure that you're being really secure with um, your information this time of year because there's a lot of people trying to get at your information this time of year. And then also make sure you have your insurance ready to go, you know, whether you're traveling, if you're going somewhere where you're going to be physical, making sure you have all your insurance cards, making sure you have your car insurance, everything that you need that will protect you and help ease your finances this time of year, definitely have that available. You just made a great point. Um, when you're traveling for the holidays, especially, you might want to choose just one credit card that you use when you travel I and mean, you want to minimize your exposure to potential fraud. So use one card, you'll know where it's been used, uh, reduces your risk. Um, and fraud, you know, hasn't been in the news at all lately. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's one of those things that, um, it's you know, coming. Make sure you, yeah, I mean, you, you have to think about those things. Now, if you're traveling, don't leave documents, your, your purses or your wallet sitting in the seat of the vehicle. Don't, you know, leave things on the counters. Don't leave things in your hotel room where people can get them um, and access your identity. You know, think about all those things, too, you know, because that can get really expensive if someone, um, you know, gets your credit card or, or identity information and is able to, to steal it at the holidays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, this hour really flew by fast. Um, I want to go through the panel really quickly. Have you share one final tip for holiday travelers and then let people know where they can learn more about you. So Jennifer, we'll go ahead and start with you. If you can just share one final tip for holiday travelers to help them save money and then let them know where they can learn more about you. Okay. Um, so my final tip, uh, my final tip about holiday travel and just like planning in, in general is to start like six months ahead. So if you can start like the holidays come every year, they're around the same time every year. And so just by like putting a little bit aside each month, or, like starting in June and just putting it in an account away, um, especially if you have a large family or a lot of kids, it'll make the impact a lot lighter than just kind of figuring out where your money's come coming at the end of the year and just kind of utilizing all those, you know, those resources that, like you said, like the points, I'm really big on the, the travel points and like making the most out of your car throughout the year. And then towards the end, you know, maximizing all of those um, resources. So that's like my big, my big point, like overall, like every, everything that was like an overall theme throughout our whole chat was like, you can plan early or like think about this, you know, early ahead, you definitely can win in most situations. Um, so as far as me, like I said, you can on Twitter. So my Twitter handle is at ADLT underscore 101. And to learn more about like my platform, my brand is like ADLT101.com. So 
thank you for having me. Thank you. Tracy, do you want to share your final tip and where people can learn more about you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, thanks for the opportunity to speak to all of you guys today. You know, I think my final tip, and it's not necessarily geared around travel, but it's just geared around the holiday season, is um, one of the things that I love to do during the holiday times is to make sure that I'm giving back um, to the people that don't have, giving something to the people that don't aren't necessarily as blessed as I am. So, you know, we think about getting gifts for our family members and our friends, but I also try to set aside some of my budget during this time of the year to give charitable gifts. Um, so this is a great time to think about that and to, you know, pick up, to get a family that's in need and to buy gifts for them. It's a great thing that you can do um, for your family to go out and pick gifts for someone else. And so I just want to encourage everyone to think about, you know, not only is it important that we spend time with our family and friends, but how can we help those who aren't as fortunate as we are? Um, so don't forget about that. Um, you can find out more about financial literacy issues um, through the American Institute of CPAs. And our website is 360finlit.com. It's a great website. You can go on there. There's a lot of um, calculators. You can plan a budget. Um, it has a lot of different um, opportunities for you to answer questions. Anything you're thinking about as far as financial questions, you can find on there. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Rod, do you have one final tip and can you let people know where to learn more about you? Yeah. Um, be like Santa. Make a list. Check it twice. You need to have a budget. You need to have a plan for the holidays. Uh, and make sure you stick to it. The impulse buys get you in trouble if you're not planning. The Jenna Red plant said planning ahead um, and, and are organized about your, your holiday travels, your holiday gift buying, it's going to cost you more. Um, so make a list, check it twice. Um, you know, make sure you know who's naughty and nice, all of those things. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and you try to be in the nice, nice group. I keep trying. I'm, I know Santa well. I'm sort of kind of resembling a little bit. <laughs> Um, getting that bowl full of jelly needs some work, I tell you. Um, but you can find me on, on Twitter at, at underscore at, at Rod underscore Griffin on um, Periscope uh, as well on our credit chat on Tuesdays and Thursdays as often as I can be uh, and here uh, on our, our uh, credit chat as well. And, and go to Experian.com. You can look for the credit advice and, and credit education sections and learn more about credit reporting, scoring, and all those things we talk about all the time. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, Rod, Tracy, for being here today and for sharing your wonderful tips. I heard on Periscope that people thought this was a really informative chat. Kenny just mentioned that. So I'm really glad that you were able to be here. Thank you so much for watching on Periscope. If you just tuned in, definitely go back and catch the replay because there are a lot of awesome tips and resources shared throughout this chat. So thank you all so much for joining. Have a happy Thanksgiving um, <clears throat> and happy holiday travels. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. You.